The game changers are coming. The game changers are coming. I'm excited and you should be excited too, folks. This is a documentary by James Cameron. Came out at the Sundance Film Festival earlier this year, January. It's soon to be released in this fall. And it's really exciting because this documentary is going to show and debunk the protein myth that meat is needed for protein, endurance, energy, and optimum health. Everything we've been told about meat is a lie. And this document is going to prove it to you. The game changes the story of James Wilk, an elite special forces trainer and the winner of the ultimate fighter. And James got injured in 2011. And after six months of not being able to train, he started studying how to, how to, how to, how to, how to overcome these injuries. He started looking at diet, nutrition. He found this fascinating study about Roman gladiators and how they were known as barley men because they ate little or no meat at all. It was a plant-based diet. And of course, when James Wilkes read this study, he found it hard to believe it, challenged everything he thought he had to do. You've got to have protein for strength. You've got to eat meat for strength, for energy, for optimum health. You've got to eat an animal. So he wanted to be convinced, so he flew down to Australia with these scientists who did this study to go down and talk to him. When he left, he was convinced beyond any doubt that food was the missing piece to the puzzle he didn't understand. And it's interesting because already we see PR propaganda countering this new documentary coming out. I read an article the other day, that's why I was reminded of it just last week. It was about the horrible food that our athletes eat. Our athletes are some of the worst eaters ever, eating junk, processed foods, McDonald's, and yet they're able to perform and be the best in their field. It doesn't mean that that diet any, is any good, but that's what it looks like, doesn't it? Well, look, at, look, at, uh, look at Phelps, look at Michael Jordan, look at uh, 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 Chenille, uh, what's his name? Uh, Oh, I, can't even, I don't pay attention to sports. What's his name? Uh, uh, Shaq. What are these guys doing at court size, eating down McDonald's? This is a great documentary, my friends. It shows what happens when we eat meat, especially for athletic performance. It decreases the blood flow. First big change I made in my life, dietary-wise, was I read the book Eat to Win in December of 1985. 1986 was a whole brand new year for me. I started following this diet that was basically a meatless diet. Dr. Robert Hawes, who wrote the book Eat to Win, had a bunch of tennis players following this diet because tennis is one of the most demanding sports there are out there, physically and even mentally. And mentally, it's number one. But physically, it's a very demanding sport. You might not be contacting someone else and banging up against them, but you're pounding down that pavement. You're swinging your arm at violent speeds, putting tremendous pressure on your joints. And you're hauling ass one way and the other way, stopping on a dime. You gotta have a good diet to perform well in that sport. When I changed my diet back in 1986, my endurance level skyrocketed. I knew they made a difference. And this document explains what it does to our veins, how it increases it, it, it increases the blood flow. And they showed that when you eat a plant-based diet, your blood is nice and clear. And as soon as you start eating animals, it clouds it up. Uh, a great documentary, I'll probably do some follow-up videos going into more detail about certain specifics. The video said, uh, uh, the more meat that men eat, the quicker they lose their libido and that a plant-based diet can increase testosterone levels by 20% within 10 days. Oh, you gotta eat your meat. Uh, and, and people accuse me of being on testosterone. Wait till you look at, what's his name? Lou Smith, uh, 61 years old, a former NFL cornerback player. Uh, wait till you see his picture. <laughs> he's as ripped and lean as I am, but he spends maybe several hours in the gym as opposed to my five or 10 minutes or so two or three times, uh, three times a week. Very big and muscular. I love his quote. He goes, most people my age can't keep up with their grandchildren. My grandchildren can't keep up with me. 
<laughs> and that's how I feel. My energy is boundless at age 64. And why is it? Because I quit eating animals back in 1986. 32 years I have not been eating animals. And I can tell a huge difference in my life because of that. People think I'm taking steroids because I'm so buff. Hey, little guy. <laughs> Zicada. Well, I don't even know what they're saying. I'm not big and buff. I don't spend any time in the gym. So some people say, oh, John, you're a scrawny. If you just ate meat, you'd be bigger. No, if I spent more time in the gym, I'd be bigger. Another great guy they show in this documentary, Patrick, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. I starts with a B. Strongest man in Germany. This man can carry 1,200 pounds, the weight of a horse, on his shoulders. <laughs> and you got to go so many, dis so many feet before you qualify, but he's got the world record for this. 1,200 pounds. And you know what he said? When I went to a no meat, no meat diet, I got bigger and stronger. It's a myth. After I read Eat to Win, I started reading every book I could on nutrition. And any book that was worth anything at all always had a whole chapter on the protein myth. That we got to eat meat for protein. It's a myth. It doesn't increase athletic performance. And if you get injured, it's going to slow down the injury. Remember what, Arnold, what happened to Arnold Errett. I've told this story many times. Arnold Eric believed that the only people who really could evaluate the quality of a diet were people who were clean. So he would do a water fast, solid food vacation on water, get all clean, and then he'd eat different food, and he'd experiment by cutting on himself. And he found that when he was clean and then went to a fruit-based diet, he caught on himself, it hardly bled, didn't hurt, healed right away. But when he went to a meat-based diet and he cut himself, it hurt, it bled a lot, it took forever to heal. A lot of you athletes out there think you gotta eat this animal protein to heal and it's gonna slow down the healing process. A lot of you athletes out there think you've gotta eat meat and animals for endurance and performance wrong. It's gonna hurt your endurance, it's gonna hurt your performance. I know, it's the first epiphany I had. It's what transformed my whole life when I changed my diet. I knew it made a difference. I wanted to know more. That's why I ended up perfecting a very complicated mathematical procedure to monitor all my caloric activity so I could make sure and do it scientifically. That's what prompted me to write a book on weight loss 30 years ago. That's when I, within two years, found this other library of knowledge. It takes it up to another level where you don't alter your food in any way. So when athletes go from a meat-based diet to a plant-based diet, they see huge improvements where they go from a plant-based diet to a living-based diet, it's totally transforming on levels that we can't even comprehend. And again, what the powers that be are doing right now is they don't want us to wake up to this. So there's already propaganda out there saying, look at all these athletes eating this horrible junk and look, how, look at their performance. Put those guys on a better diet and now watch their performance. That's what we need to do. And it's so interesting how things are coming to me. Uh, all in the last week or so, I was watching a, a movie, Tomorrowland, and they were talking about how bad the human species is and how we're doomed. There's no hope for us. There's a 0% chance that we're going to recover from this. And at one point in the movie, the guy was arguing with George Clooney saying, epidemics of obesity and starvation, explain that one to me. <laughs> I said, boy, that's a good one, isn't it? How do you explain the fact that we have epidemics of obesity and epidemics of starvation? Well, I've talked about these topics before. Food is a weapon system, my friends. In order to understand what's going on, you have to understand that there's something wrong with our species. We are sick. We prey upon ourselves. Some of us are worse than others, and those are the ones that control everything. They want us to be sick. They want us to die of starvation. They want us to be obese and sick. They want us to suffer. That's how they control us. Remember, the world is divided into two main groups for the powers that be. Half of us don't have a middle class. We're undernourished and underfed, and we're starving. 40,000 children a day are dying all the time. They don't ever want a middle class. That's how they control those people. So yeah, look at the starvation we have on this planet. It's sickening that that happens. But then we have epidemics of obesity. This is the other half of the world the powers that be want to control. And they want us to be sick and obese, so we're overfed and undernourished. So we have the underfed and undernourished. Now we got the overfed and undernourished. We're still undernourished. 
What people think is normal is a joke. When you look at what's in the grocery store, the cereals, the cookies, the crackers, the pasta, all this processed food devoid of nutrition, where we eat and eat and eat and eat and we're never well fed. That's why we keep eating. Our body's still cry, cry, craving nutrition, but we're not giving it to it. So why do we have these epidemics of obesity and starvation? Food is a weapon system. It's used to control us. All of our needs can be used to control us. I've talked about this before in the common links and common flaws between the Zeitgeist movement, uh, the Thrive documentary, and all the conspiracy theorists. There's a common link between controlling the masses, conquering nations, and solving problems within our control. And that common link all has to do with our needs. How do you, how do you solve every problem within our control? Simple, satisfy our needs. We've got two groups of them. How do you conquer a nation? You don't let them satisfy their needs. Starve them out. How do you conquer, how do you control the masses? You Once again, you don't let them satisfy their needs. You don't give them the knowledge of how to live so that they'll be overfed, obese, and sick. It's simple, folks. The powers that be cannot control us unless we're sick. We're either underfed and undernourished, overfed, and once again, undernourished. It's by design. The whole system collapses if we ever find knowledge of how to live. So this documentary is powerful. The game changers is coming. Great information in this documentary that busts these myths that eating meat is masculine, that we need meat for protein and strength and endurance. If we're gonna repair injuries for optimum health, we need to eat meat. That's a lie, one of the biggest lies ever. And again, it goes back to understanding who controls the planet. These people worship Satan. They want everything to suffer on this planet. They want the animals to suffer. They want us to suffer. They want the plants to suffer, the environment to suffer. It's all about suffering for them. And they're a reflection of us. Don't forget that. The only way to defeat them is for all of us to realize we're in the middle of that bell. And the bell itself has to change. Remember a bell-shaped curb? Most of us are in the middle of that bell. We got saints on one end, psychopaths on the other, the powers that be. The only way to defeat those powers that be is for the bell itself to change and then the edges of the bell will change. Simple solution. But it, but it starts with us waking up that we don't want to eat animals. There are also plants that we're not supposed to eat either. Processed foods. We can process some vegetables like the bonobos process their plant food by chewing and spitting out the fiber. That's called wadgy. We can use a juice extractor for that. We sure in the hell don't want to use chemicals, but the main thing we got to stop doing is the first of those five mistakes. Chemicals, processed foods, plants we're not biologically adapted to eat, the animals we're not biologically adapted to eat, number one. It's the cooking of our food, that's number one. Remember folks, humans do not have specialized, genetic, anatomical or physiological adaptation to meat consumption as pointed out in the Game Changers. We have anatomical limitations. When you're on the hero's journey as a trim tab trying to help wake people up, people are going to look at you and think, well, where are you? what are your credentials? Who gives you the authority to tell me what to eat? And you tell them that your authority is their anatomy. Do you get what I'm saying? How can you speak with any authority? My authority comes from your anatomy. I'm not imposing my diet on you, I'm imposing our diet on you. We have a species-specific diet, just like every other species on this planet. And we are clearly plant eaters. And the Game Changers points that out. It proves that athletic performance increases when you stop eating the animals. It proves that health increases when you stop eating animals. But no. We're tricked and fooled. Now they are coming out normalizing obesity. In my next video I'll be doing, along with other videos that follow up this video, I'll be featuring the cover of the October media issues of UK Cosmo 
Cosmopolitan magazine, where they feature plus size model Tess Holiday. And critics are really up in arms about this, saying, hey, we're, you're normalizing obesity. And good old Tess fancies herself as a body positivity activist. And physicians around the world are warning us of this body positivity movement. And I like what one physician tweeted out about this article, that, or this Cosmopolitan article. Uh, he says, I cannot condone body shaming, but as a physician, I cannot condone pretend, people pretending that obesity is healthy. Beauty is skin, beauty may be skin deep, <laughs> like something crawling in my leg right now. Beauty may be skin deep, but fat deposits go all the way down to our internal organs. And I love the tweet he puts out because he takes this picture, which I'm going to probably use as a thumbnail, of Best Holiday on the front cover of the UK Cosmopolitan. And in the middle, he has a picture of a healthy heart on one side and another heart that is coated with fat deposits. So when you see a person who's morbidly obese like Tess Holliday, you got to realize that that obesity goes all the way in and surrounding her organs. Obesity is not healthy, my friends. I have a huge file on obesity. A basic obesity file where I've listed every article I've read, not every article, well most of the articles I've read, well if I, if I read it I've listed it, <laughs> I haven't read every article on it, but I've got a huge list of articles showing the obvious connection between excess weight and our health problems. We know the BMI, there's a direct relationship between that also. What our experts don't really understand is they keep focusing on the fat, not realizing that we have two bathrooms in our body and that's where the real problem comes into play. So this is an exciting time, my friends. If you're on the hero's journey, we've got some more ammunition. Remember on the hero's journey, one of the things you do is you gather data to help other people join the hero's journey. And within a very short period of time, it hasn't been released yet, the time hasn't even been released, we're gonna be seeing the game changers. Get excited about this documentary because it dispels and debunks the myth that we've got to eat meat. Think about it, these Roman gladiators, why did they choose to eat no meat? Because they were training, they were athletes, they were getting injured, and they found that meat was not a good thing to do if that was your goal. Again, first diet theory change I made is I quit eating animals. My endurance level skyrocketed, I got all excited about it. Perfected a procedure to monitor everything. Once I realized what was going on with me, I realized what was going on with everybody. Started writing a book on weight loss. Two years into that, I found this other library of knowledge where I realized I needed to take my diet up one more step. Stopped eating the animals. Now let's stop cooking it. So we need to have another documentary, James Cameron, and take this up to another level. Let's show the evils that come when we alter our food with fire. Because the unwise use of fire is the reason why this planet has turned into hell. I do videos about this all the time. You know, there's something that we are doing that put us where we are. And we've been tricked into thinking, no, this is just part of our nature, it's part of our DNA. No, it's not. Man has a different type of evil that is different than in nature, where predation exists because animals are designed to eat animals. We're not designed to eat those animals. And as soon as you start killing the animals, you're going to start killing man also. Yes, did a video recently on that one too. So in the upcoming days, I'll be doing a, a video on specifically with uh, uh, Tess Holiday and the Cosmos October Media uh, uh, version or issue so I can make sure and bring that to everyone's attention. And I'll probably do some, uh, some follow-up videos, if I decide to, on going into specific points that were brought out in the Game Changers. Because it really is a Game Changer, folks. This documentary has the possibility to wake a lot of people up. And if more and more of us keep waking up, we're gonna eventually figure out that we have to test an idea as time has come. And when enough of us finally test an idea as time has come and everyone else realizes that's what we gotta do, 
That's when the whole planet transforms, and that's when everything on this planet, the animals, the plants, and especially us, are in for a treat.